from Unbound B to B, wishing you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. As we are headed into 2022, fresh from all the successes, what will be the trend shaping B2B SaaS brand? Will we build on the progress made earlier this year or squander away those gains? More importantly, will the party last? As the research show, the SaaS market is growing by 18% every year and there are numbers to confirm that in the upcoming years most of the organization will use one or more SaaS solution to operate effectively. If you own a SaaS business or considering starting one in 2022, this video is the ultimate guide for go-to market strategy for B2B SaaS brand. To discuss more, we have Stephen Ripin, the head of growth and founder of Luck Boosters who have given some amazing points to consider while making 2022 strategy. Please continue to the main video. So for starters, I would love to know about your B2B journey and your company, Luck Boosters. Yeah, a company with a very funky name. Um, okay, so I come from an um, uh, entrepreneurship background. Um, as a kid, um, I've worked, I, so my, my family had a, a few businesses around. Um, so as a kid, I've worked with, um, um, when, you, during the summer, you know, kids go and play and I was, I was working in different, um, in different companies that my family owned. Um, so I've worked in furniture, distribution, retail. Um, it was quite fun um, in the university. So my choice was obviously something related to business. Mm -hmm. uh, in the university, I studied, I studied uh, marketing and logistics. Um, and um, it was quite fun. Um, that's why I joined um, my uncle's wine company. So I had a wine company, I had to sell wines, which is majorly B2B. Right. It's less, let's, well, it's more, it's, let's say, 30 to 70 is more offline than, than online. But it was still interesting about the relationships with buyers, what kind of um, um, issues um, uh, can, we, can we solve for them so they, they buy from us the wine, uh, the quality, and this kind of, a lot of sales enablement stuff, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, after several years um, in the wine company, I moved, uh, I moved uh, to, to Europe, to, to Budapest. And here I worked with um, a, a corporate health application for a few years. I was head of growth there. Um, and uh, it was a Finnish Hungarian company. We were really good. Like I think in, in Hungary, we were one of the um, was that um, in most innovational players uh, at that time. Um, we've had contracts with, with Samsung, uh, Nokia, Sunto. It was uh, uh, quite well organized. Um, and um, after after that, I left. Um, after that job um, was not challenging anymore for me. I, I went to um, Austria. I worked in Vienna as a consultant, as a growth consultant for um, uh, an agency in in Austria. Um, again, quite challenging, interesting projects. I launched an ICO. Um, I, I was involved in crypto. Um, I was involved in um, in B two B. I was involved in a few. Um, um, interesting projects related to crypto, crypto B two B. Like we were selling, um, we were selling, let's say, um, different ingredients for uh, for several uh, creams and 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 uh, um, pharmaceutical pharmaceutical stuff. So we we dealt a lot with pharmaceutical companies. Uh, it was uh, quite interesting. Uh, since then, um, I came. I came back to, to Budapest in 2019, and that's when I've uh, created Luck Boosters. And with Luck Boosters, we've had. Um, so I'll tell, I'll just name the industries with which we worked. Uh, we worked with aviation, with drones, uh, helicopters, uh, in the B2B space. Uh, a few property management companies, um, like such as Upkeep. Not I didn't work with Upkeep, but companies similar to what Upkeep does, right? Uh, and software development companies, uh, Dev, uh, let's say, um, um, DevGrid, SouthGrid, and, and, and others. Um, and yeah, this is my, my experience so far. With, uh, with, uh, this is my background so far. I, I've chosen um, the, the name Luck Boosters because uh, basically sometimes we try to, as, as business people, try to figure out what is in... Um, what isn't the success? What's the component of the success success that we have, right? And in a lot of cases, it's just luck, you know. Mm. Um, in a lot of cases, I see uh, there is like someone um, is just gets in a, a very good trend, and people mm. get lucky, and then they win. And when hard times come, they are just like, "Oops, there is nothing I can do." They right. go bankrupt, you know. Yeah. And and um, I wanna I wanna see myself um, as someone who brings luck to the company. 
who boosts the luck of the company definitely i mean with luck you as well you know you need hard work both at the same time too so that your company and you can achieve heights of success yeah exactly yeah so coming back to the luck 2021 was very lucky for every company for every businesses they have uh, you know have the perfect roi they have reached to their kpis and everything but uh, we are talking about the saas businesses over here so what were the major factors that were holding back the saas business in 2021 Oh, okay um i'll try to be a bit non obvious i think is the the stupidity of the founders <laughs> um I, just joking i think it's the how how adaptable how adaptable is the founding committee or the founding team to the changes i think it's one of the major factors um second one is of course corona like there is yeah. such things as corona of course hold back uh entire industries that say I've had contacts with the um, companies in the, in the travel space and mm-hmm. you know travel space was 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 dead so there was nothing you can actually do about that um other things like again I would say the mo- mostly it's about the adaptability like how adaptable to to corona are people and how yeah. fast can they uh can they um be in the ch- in the, in the change when you know when it comes to you need to work remote you need to work faster when you're remote yeah. right how can you how you can you manage your people better and like manage the, your your um resources better and how can you actually stand out because since everyone is like on on their screens on in front of their phones and they're you can't really go and literally see your buyer at the conference mm-hmm. what kind of stuff are you going how are you going to show them how are you going to appeal to them in a way that they're going to see that you in front of their computer and not physically right so yeah. you have to be innovative you have to be interesting right to so stand out so i think this is the main challenge like i think maybe innovation creativity as well mm-hmm. i would say yeah definitely so when we are talking about 2022 it's almost about the year end and everyone is planning for the strategy for 2022 what challenges will market you face in 20, uh, 2022 because marketing leaders have already predicted that the business will will return to the pre pandemic level and uh, the market will stabilize so the marketers have to anyways prepare for the uncertainty over here so what were the factors and the challenges yeah, that so have, um yeah. there you know there please There is a there is a there is a very fa- there is a famous joke. If mm-hmm. you want to make God laugh, tell him about your plans. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, any any of our predictions are um, are just predictions. Uh, yeah. Just ask me about my predictions. What what um, the cha- uh, cha- what's predicted for for next year? Mm-hmm. I would say that video uh, video and will will become more and more predominant in the market, or video or visual. Um, I can see also already that Google is becoming more and more visual. Yes. So people watch more video, right? And that's, mm-hmm. I think this is the right moment. I did the, this was the right moment for Facebook to launch its uh, Meta, Meta, the yes. Metaverse, the, mm-hmm. the Meta company, right? Mm-hmm. With right. the with the with all the things included. I'm not sure. I'm not sure though. Um, Facebook is going to create the new Metaverse because I don't think they're good. in creating pro- at creating products anymore but they'll buy the ne- the player who's going to create this metaverse yeah. I, they, that's their they, they just is a strategy for them um so i think i think uh, being um uh, showing a personality i think it's is showing a personality on video or showing the company's personality and thought leadership mm-hmm. on video is the is the is the, i think that's what's going to come um next year uh, in 2022 and it's going to be more predominant like mm-hmm. um I think so. Yeah. yeah. So people, we are, uh, you know, previously you talk about adaptability, uh, adaptability over here. People, the marketers have, you know, very quickly adapted the video marketing thing. Uh, they are video interviews, podcasts, webinars, and everything. And by returning to the pre-pandemic level in 2022, uh, do you think that video marketing will still make the podcast business? Everything will still make impact in 2022 as it has already made in 2021 and 2020. Yes, I do think that uh, yeah. podcasting will not die. Um I'll give an example. Yeah. For example, uh the companies I work, I say okay, I'm going to help you create like a a, a media presence and thought leadership, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So what is media presence? It's basically you need to think as a media company. Uh think of Forbes Inc entrepreneur. So a must for a media company is a podcast, right? Media uh, is a podcast is mm-hmm. creating good blog articles, creating 
um, videos, and all that is is um, in, all that is important. And I think it, it will just be more influential, more uh, important in in the future. So nothing will happen with that. It's just going to be more of that content. And unless you're talking about your buyers' issues and your buyers' jobs to be done, what mm -hmm. are are you trying to achieve with the content you are creating? Then you might not even with fairly okay content you might not score because the competition is going to be very very tough so you got to talk to customers create with them content and just put it out there so the other potential customers will look at it and say oh yeah this is the guy i want to work with you know so he yeah. talks exactly about my issue mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so you mentioned about content marketing over here content marketing was all about video and different type of experimentation while in this ads business so what type of content will work in 2022 apart from video marketing people are also you know experimenting on tiktoks on different informal channels so what do you think about it like do saas business marketers need to go on different channel or do they need to focus on one particular channel that is linkedin for the rest of the year 2022 uh that linkedin is a good channel but um again for a few years uh let's let's if i answer your question exactly yes it makes sense Mm -hmm. to be on LinkedIn in 2022, mm -hmm. certainly. Um, but I usually, how I, I, I also, uh, how I also, I, I work with, with my clients is like I put 80 to 20. So 80% on your, or your channel, which gives you the most uh, outcome now and 20% on the channel, which right. might work in the future. Uh, so I would definitely work. It might not fit your brand again, but I think mm -hmm. pe people are more and more going to TikTok as well. Oh, okay. uh, maybe there's going to be a different channel, hmm. but I, th I think that TikTok is going to be, is going to rock in a few years for B2B as well. So you might want to experiment with TikTok or with Insta Instagram for B2B as well. Uh, but there is certainly, um, LinkedIn is going to be full. Like I'll tell you in, in a few years, yeah. um, it's going to be it. It's going to feel like Facebook and people, well, I, I don't see a lot of businesses. B2B is not really big on, on, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So um, you should be ready that the channel is going to fill up. So you should start experimenting as of now uh, with other types of content, other types of presence. Yeah, great. So, uh, you know, when we are talking about SaaS business over here, so what type of uh, assets, assets like benchmark, data, content would help to grow SaaS business? Um, in, in this case, um, I would say that, um, well, you, you mentioned it content, but, you know, when we say content, it's mm -hmm. not just... Um, One thing. It's not just it's article, diversified. Right? Yeah. 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 So you need to diversify the types the types of content which you have. Uh, so for me, for me, when when I say content, for me, content is first of all, uh, let's say an article, right? Hmm. Second, it could be a video, right? Uh, third, it could be a webinar. That's also content for me, right? Right. There could be, um, um, uh, let's say you have you you mentioned benchmark. Let, let's say benchmark data could be a research article that you do. In mm -hmm. the industry, right? And then puts yes. you, it puts you out as, as a thought leader in the industry, right? Mm -hmm. That's one of the exercises, again, I, I do with uh, my clients. We, uh, we, we try to, we create these research articles and we try to put you as a thought leader in mm -hmm. the industry with, with this, you know? Um, what other uh, um, summits, uh, web summits, um, webinars, uh, panels? Yeah. Uh, roundup articles where you ask experts about a certain topic and then you just get lined. Mm -hmm. um, where there uh, videos again, um, you know, all all of that. Like it depends depending on the industry you are in. Mm -hmm. But uh, what from what I see, you know, there is a different percentage of types of content that work for a certain industry, and they always change. Let's say if SEO worked really well for you this year, then next year it might not. So you need to do all these webinars and summits yeah. and maybe <laughs> something else. And then for someone who, for whom the webinars uh, webinars work really well, they maybe should move to SEO because right. the market is trying to is starting to mature and mm -hmm. there is there starts to become demand. There starts to search terms start to come up. The 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 keywords so there are more keywords so you can start building your SEO. Again, it's it's a question of the market you're in, right? right. Uh, there is not no uh, one, one one advice for everyone, but you just yeah, you just basically improvise based on the mm -hmm. uh, on the on the trends you see uh, going on in the market. Yeah, great. So, um, twenty twenty one was also about demand generation. So, what sources for demand generation will work best? 
for B2B marketers to generate the most pipeline? Well, of course, it depends. Um, um, I would say, um, well, traditionally there is SEO, it depends if you're, if you're creating demand, if there is certain demand already, um, then SEO, right? Search in yeah. intent. Depending how much search intent is there, long tail keywords, mm -hmm. focus on those. Uh, I don't know how much uh, competition is in your in your uh, field, but you need to check that. Um, LinkedIn, of course. Mm. Um, that's the second one. Third, I would do maybe I would I would be interested in maybe some um, magazines in the industry, magazines or media resources in your industry, because like mm -hmm. you know they just put their their, their foot fo always forward, and um, by by showing up there, you'll be in the eyes of of uh, of your potential buyers, you know. Mm -hmm. um, a big different, a big, a big thing is, um, I think, um, is whether whether your your buyers already know about whether they have such an issue or not, because there is a difference. Because if they if they know about your issue, it's it's simple. Your your uh, SEO could be through the roof. You can you can uh, build. Uh, you, there is some demand, but if you have to build the demand, and people mm -hmm. don't even know about such an issue, right? right. Um, in this case. It, it's much harder. You'll you'll need to talk to people directly and kind of uncover their problems. Um, mm -hmm. You'll need to do educational content. Mm -hmm. um, basically, here comes the here comes the the example of the dark social funnel, yeah. where you can't you can't really advertise anything because um, where do people you want to sell to? Like B two B buyers, where do they spend their their time? In email, in their CRM, they mm -hmm. might jump in a call in Zoom. Uh, mm -hmm. They spend a little bit on LinkedIn. And in things where you cannot advertise, so you need to be spending more time in dark social, in right. different very niche forums, mm -hmm. in magazines, um, in um, in WhatsApp groups, for example, in Facebook groups where yeah. like small groups, you know. Mm -hmm. So don't think about scaling at all. I, I would say about like fuck like fuck scaling. Think about stuff that you can do right now to to impress your buyer, to make mm -hmm. his her life better. And if that's going to work, then you eventually will find a place, uh, a way to, to grow, to scale. But for now, focus on the small, small outcomes uh, that you don't, do not necessarily can track and show your CMO or CFO that, oh, I did this and this is how much time I spent here and this is how much, much money I've spent on this channel. And it uh, um, brought this much uh, result. It is not, it is not, um, there is no direct attribution in this case. I would say mm -hmm. focus on the, again, focus on something that's unscalable. Right, right, right. So uh, what you are telling is like experiment through each and every channel, experiment through different portals so that you can have the final strategy customized, which is a uh, whole soul. It's only for you, not for anyone, because each and every agency is different. Their agendas are different, right? So what your agencies need to yes. focus is on experimentation rather than to following one particular strategy if that the, the competitor is following. Yes. yes. So um, if you want my if you want my comment on this, mm. I would say um, for how it works how it works for me is like I have um, I have several playbooks which I use depending on where the the company is and where the market is right, mm. and depending on that playbooks I I uh, kind of custom fit them to the company because okay. there is no one one approach even a company which is like one on one with the, with a company which let's say i i uh, i uh, i worked with uh, let's um, i don't know like a few months ago mm -hmm. the the situation in the market is already different the market matured differently the company is different it has a different access to resources right mm -hmm. it has um again you talk about money about the people that work there um, about the, the the country they are in all of that influences so uh, you you can't you can't just sell these like I, I see a lot of uh, nine nine hundred ninety nine courses and say oh we'll send you this you'll read this is fantastic playbook and you'll get amazing results like who here's here's how you're gonna get that of yeah. course yeah those things work but they don't they want the ROI of those things will become um, like less and less and less until it's gonna reach zero and then only I don't know, some stupid people will buy it right. Right. Um, so you need to be continuing to continue innovating uh, in this space. Right, um, right. Okay, great. So what marketing trends we can expect in 2022? As the pandemic was all about video marketing, 
So apart from what uh, you know, video marketing, what are there in the kitties for marketers to ex uh, experiment the trends, basically? Yeah, um, so I think I think another um, another trend that I'm seeing, I'm gonna see, we're gonna see more uh, next year is um, focus on dark social more. That people yeah. focus more on things that they cannot measure. Mm -hmm. um, so when some some well, you know, like if, now it's very famous that you put some money into Google AdWords or LinkedIn and you, here comes the result, um, which you can go and show your uh, chief financial officer and say, oh, okay, look how many clicks we got, how many MQLs you got, but then your sales can't close this MQLs. So um, the focus I think will be on, on things that do not scale, but they do, they do educate the audience. Um, that's the second, that's the, my second, second prediction. Um, I think my third prediction would be around the buyer-centric journey. Uh, mm -hmm. If you've heard about the product-led book and the product-led movement, I think something like that is going to be in in marketing, but it's going to be about buyer. I would say something about buyer-centric journeys, right? Buyer-centric journey, yes. journeys and go-to-market strategies. Okay. Because um, I, I on my own, what I do is like I help companies with with their go-to-market strategies and how they move into different markets and basically, um, um, well, trying to scale on different markets and different um, uh, niche categories. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing a big, a big change because before people would focus a lot on like on their own sales. Now, I think it's about how the buyer buys. Mm -hmm. So the buyer, you know, we all know as marketers that, oh, you need like seven different steps uh, seven seven touches for the for the buyer to to buy from you right or to get in touch with you mm -hmm. um, but they're not necessarily aligned you know like mm -hmm. a buyer might might look into your uh, look at your email and then you he might get he or she might get back to you in seven months saying i am ready to buy right and right. you don't know like and since since not all of the stuff is is trackable you don't know pardon my french jack shit about what what's his what's his journey right mm -hmm. so your your best your best um, um, guess would be to ask him how did how did or she find about right. you right and then basically invest into that so I think um, to summarize it it's about um, it's a, it's about making a, a journey that's going to be great for the buyer like make right. it very comfortable for the buyer to buy right yeah. Okay, so one last question, for, uh, you know, for you. What is the secret sauce in B two B that has always worked for you? What's that strategy that you always go to? Like, this is my customer strategy, which is only meant for me. Oh, I have lots of strategies, uh, <laughs> but one I think it's consistency. I'm trying to be very mm -hmm. consistent. So, um, basically, how it goes is I, I would I would never. Um, if if I want to do something and I don't have the budget right now, I would certainly uh, try this ex experiment later on. So mm -hmm. I would say consistent experimentation. I, I like to experiment things and I like to to take things from one context and use it in in another context. Okay. Because that's how they they work the best, right? Yeah. And um, since I mentioned all the the market maturity. One market could be, let's say, the the martech uh, industry is far ahead of everyone. It's very far ahead. Yes. But if you look at the, I don't know, at the oil industry, they're way behind in terms of, let's say, digital. So you can take stuff that works in the martech industry and wow. try it in the oil industry, right? Experiments. And this is definitely that um, something that worked for me, like um, trying to adapt and being consistent and um, and a big uh, use creativity and experimentation. Okay, well, thank you so much for you know uh, coming on the show and s uh, sharing some great insight about your journey and about the trends in uh, in twenty twenty. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for the interview. Have a great day. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Let me know in the comment section below what are your plans for 2022. Also, please subscribe to Unbound official channel to get the latest happening of B2B work. Thanks.